What's up, Internet? In this video, we're talking about the high-pressure springs available for our MRS as well as our series of compact regulators such as the Microreg, UGS, and CGS. As one might gather from the name, the high-pressure spring is installed to increase the maximum output pressure of your regulator. Now, generally, you would accomplish this by adding a shim to preload the spring. This method is commonly used by other manufacturers to quickly increase the pressure output of the regulator. The downside to this method is, since you're shifting the entire pressure range up, you lose your lower end pressure range. So if you're going from CQB to Sniper, back to CQB again, you'll probably find you'll have to take that shim in and out to operate in those lower or higher pressure ranges. By simply changing the spring's rate, you retain that lower end pressure range and just increase the maximum output of the regulator. So one may pose the question, if you can still hit the lower pressure range with the spring, why don't we use this the standard spring in our regulators? This is because the standard spring is tuned for optimum performance within the average pressure range used by most HPA systems. Although the high pressure spring allows the regulator to operate in that lower pressure range, it technically will not recharge as quickly as a standard spring, even though you'd have to be pushing the system pretty hard to see any kind of noticeable difference. All right, so let's get into swapping the springs and see how it affects the output pressure of the regulator. With the MRS installed on a standard output HPA tank, maxed out we're showing about 150 PSI. So first we're gonna do is back the pressure down to the minimum, see where we're at. So this will not purge automatically, so as you back it down, you have to depressurize the system using your airline or firing the gun. All right, so all the way down, we're just under 40 PSI. Go ahead and turn the tank off. Complete purge the system. And once it's off, we're going to start by taking out the four screws around the body using a 3 30 second Allen wrench. separate the two halves of the body. And the spring is housed in the upper section, so first we move our torrent lock, then we're going to thump on the table to remove the dividing wall. Might take a little persuasion, just get down far enough so you can grab it. Like so, you're going to find a spring right underneath. Just dumps out, going to replace it with the high pressure spring. Just be careful when installing it not to nick the edge of the piston stem. Drop that in there. Our dividing wall back in. Then slide our torrent lock back on. And reassemble the body. Now, usually we reassemble with the one off valve on the left, but it can be on the right if you prefer to do it that way. Just make sure that the hole in the torrent lock is above the valve, whichever way you have ran it. All right, I'm just going to reinstall our screws. Once that's done, let's do the install and see what we get. All right, air it up. Still just below 40 psi. Now let's see if we get for maximum pressure. Just about 200 psi. All right, well that's all you need to do to install a high pressure spring in an MRS. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for more tech videos and tutorials. And as always, if you want to see something in particular, just comment below. See you later.